Okay, we continue this special vintage video edition of the Headbangers Ball by meeting some more of our special guests. And this is a band that I'm very pleased to welcome to the Headbangers Ball at yes. long last. Uh, it's up and coming British rockers, Kiss of the Gypsy. And uh, I'm joined by Martin and George. Thanks for stopping by to talk to us. So, yeah, cheers. Thank you very much. Yeah. You played here last night. How did you get on? All right, it was good. I mean, we went on quite late, sort of midnight. So. By that time, everybody was sort of settling down by the campfires in the in the thing there, and uh, yeah, we had a good time. It was great, yeah. And the rain stayed off, good. thank God, good. which uh, made up for it this morning. Though it was thundering and lightning this morning, but yeah, it was a good gig, wasn't it? Really? Enjoyed it. Yeah. Absolutely excellent. Yeah. Want to do it again? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now um, you've released your self-titled debut album, and I believe that's on an American label. Have you found that to be an advantage or a disadvantage? Uh, well, yeah, we are signed to Atlantic, which is an American label. Um, I think one of the disadvantages is because it's an American label and they're out there and we're here, right. and sometimes, you know, that's sort of like, well, we wish we were out there, like getting on with it and promoting it out there, but, you know, so that was probably the main disadvantage. But uh, they've let us have a free reign, really. There's Sorry. no sort of UK office of Atlantic yeah, anymore, right. so, as well, so. But uh, we just get on with it and just hope that people doing their job will do as best they can, and like we do with ours, you know. I sometimes wonder what I have to do to make you realize just how I feel for you. Do you know I'm here? Maybe you're unaware that the hands you dealt me left me unprepared. British rock scene at the moment. I think it's getting healthier, you know. I think with the, you know, the bands that are around them, like Thunder and the Almighty and all that kind of thing. I think that's really giving it a kick up the pants, you know. And uh, hopefully it'll continue on that that sort of build. And hopefully we can jump on with them and and sort of follow into the rest of the 90s, you know, with some good British rock. Uh, it's a shame that it doesn't get recognised in some of the, you know, some of the rock press that British bands get. A, you know, they should be given more of a chance, I think. It's very often the American get the big front pages and all that, and the British bands get swept to one side. But, you know, there are some great bands in this country, and I think people should be a bit more open, prepared to give them a chance, you know. I agree 100%. <laughs> now, uh, on this show, we're talking uh, classic artists, classic videos, influences. Now, what are your influences? Oh, well, we've got them vast sort of array of stuff that we listen to that we probably like un unwittingly take bits of and it all goes in but personally I'm really into stuff like Aerosmith you know and uh, all, all that old type sort of really sort of you know grooving stuff like that What's and that? that was actually gro me grooving there George yeah what about you oh school bands when I was at school sort of Saxon I thought they were ace <laughs> um, Iron Maiden you know yeah, yeah. all sort of well-known bands yeah, yeah. We've got a soft spot for a lot of that Queen and all Absolutely. those real classic bands. I think classic bands, I think every band is influenced by all the real sort of like mega known ones, you know, so, yeah. OK, well, thanks for taking time to talk to me Thank at the well, Bulldog yeah. Bash. And actually, I'm glad you mentioned uh, Aerosmith because we're going to take a short break now. And then after that, we are going to see some classic Aerosmith. Yeah, yeah. Rock and roll. <laughs> 